time now for, uh, let's see, Conrad's Car Clinic. We were talking about Shelby's. Well, yeah, you know, uh, we started with Mr. Norm and, uh, and the car that we had at uh, uh, Autorama that won its class. Uh, did the, we tell everybody that? Yes. Okay. No, well, we didn't. Well, we did on social media. No, I know, but we didn't. Well, we really didn't. We uh, should back that up. We should. Yeah. Uh, so let's back up and uh, r- remind everybody. If you didn't know or didn't see, we had uh, the 1965 Dodge Coronet. Jim Coronet Tilly's 500. Car. Uh-huh. And it was a Mr. Norm car. Mr. Norm was a dealer in Chicago that hot-rotted factory cars when he got them to the dealership. And there weren't an overall terms there weren't that many of them made mm-hmm. and jim took the car and completely redid it mm-hmm. in its original form and except for the four except for the wheels 426 wedge yeah wedge motor in it and um the judges deemed it worthy of a first place award yeah and we were really proud and, and proud for him yeah to get the award yeah, stunning he car he had two awards stunning car yes he did i don't remember what the second award was oh, but it, it was a cash award division the best both <laughs> the booth, no, it wasn't the booth. But um, there were two. But, but yeah. that's kind of started my thought of the conversation of, you know, and, and you had done a piece on who Mr. Norm was and right. Grand Spalding Dodge up in the Chicago area. And then I followed it up with the Chevy guys and Dickie Harrell and the Yankos and the Baldwin and all of those. So I thought, you know, the other one of, of fame is Carol Shelby. We got to remember, Shelby started with uh, the Ford products. Building Mustangs, the GT350 uh, seen here, um, was a 65 model car. All of them in 65 were white with a blue stripe. Um, that was uh, that was the choice, and they all started life as a uh, as a 289 with the K code hypo motor in them, and then Shelby put on his own. He had his own exhaust manifolds created for him that were kind of like this tri Y header, and uh, he put a high rise uh, intake manifold on them and a 325 CFM uh, Holley carburetor, and the output went from 271 to 306 uh, horsepower at a six thousand rpm uh red line and that was kind of where shelby built his thing and then in 66 shelby started adding some other colors and stuff to the cars but i thought one of the cool things about 66 the gt350 um was not just the the change of colors but also the relationship with hertz rent a car and and shelby produced 1373 fastbacks uh, in 1966, and um, that's and, my favorite there. Yeah, yeah. good looking car. And then the uh, the GT 350H, which was the the Hertz <laughs> cars that were sold that were sold to Hertz, and you could uh, rent them from Hertz. They, there was a thousand and three of those uh, that were um, delivered to Hertz for rental, and you know it was where the phrase was coined rent a racer that mm-hmm. was about this car and come to find out through the years that rent a racer car a lot of people would go rent the car jerk the motor out of it put a regular 289 <laughs> in it and return and the car back, to hertz yeah. Bam. You know, also in 66 uh, shelby played around with um uh, that was the first time they offered an automatic in the car but they also offered an optional paxton supercharger um Pretty cool that uh, you know the, the the small little differences between the sixty six and sixty or uh, sixty five and sixty six cars uh, were there, uh, but Ford, um, in order to help Shelby sales, Ford, a major stakeholder, um, that extra thousand cars that were sold to Hertz was because Ford owned Hertz at the time. Don't you wish that you had a, 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 one of those cars? 350H, I, that would be w- my Shelby of choice. Well, I think I've, right. only, I've only seen all in all the years a couple of those. Yeah. There was two of the, the Hertz rent racers at Autorama in a booth not far from I me. saw that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, you know, so, you know, there were, there were some differences in them, um, but, uh, you know, the limited slip differential was an option. You would think in those cars, the Shelby's, that the limited slip would be standard. Uh, in 67, uh, the Mustang why, why changed. Why did he do that? 
Well, it was just about price. It was just trying to manage the price of the gotcha. vehicle. And buy them in production. Right. And then in uh, 67, the car got bigger, and Shelby got bigger along with it. You know, he went uh, from the GT350, he added a, uh, a GT500, and the GT500s came with the 428 police interceptor engine. And they say there was a couple of... Uh, of uh, Shelby's that were each, e actually sold with the uh, 427 um, uh, side oiler engines in them as well. And um, th there were some things about the car you could identify. I've seen one of those, and it was here in Houston, one of the 427 side oiler cars. Um, so again, uh, Shelby was trying to create that wow factor, the halo car for Ford, and he did a great job of it. Um, the uh, there were some other unique vehicles that were built in the '67 model year. Uh, Little Red, uh, which was discovered on a farm field in a March of 2018, was a Shelby uh, notchback that you know that they never produced, but there was they Shelby had one made for himself, and that was found uh, not that long ago here in Texas. And then they also started uh, releasing the GT5 350 and 500 convertibles um, uh, in, in that time period as well. Uh, the the is this a long report? Yes. Yeah, he said he needed a couple minutes. And then uh, in '68, Shelby uh, uh, Cobra was applied to the vehicle. It, it was it was all just right. Shelby GT350 GT500 in 68 they added the name Cobra to it because Ford had released the Cobra jet motor so now oh, Shelby see. wanted to bring So the, the Cobra, Cobra was related to the Cobra jet motor Correct Gotcha I never understood why you know it was the Mustang right but a Cobra right so we got a horse and we got a snake and 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 you know the uh uh, the GT350 went from a 289 to a 302 in 68 as well. Um, again, producing more horsepower, and Shelby had his own unique features on it as far as the intake manifold and the headers to create more power from the production one. But the, the key point of that was the 428 police interceptor engine uh, with the single four-barrel carburetor or with the dual four-barrel carburetors. Um, you know, the, the hood scoop that was actually brought fresh air into the engine uh and it uh he included the sequential taillights which i always thought was a cool feature I did too, yeah. that was brought over from the cougar yep. but was added to the shelby products as well um and uh integrated the the rear spoiler and the functional brake scoops and a lot of that fiberglass parts were created for shelby exclusively for his uh for his uh model line and then uh um, we'll talk next week about uh, Shelby also had a relationship when Lee Iacocca left Ford and went to Chrysler. Shelby came over and did some Chrysler products. We'll talk about those next yep. week. Okay, thank you, sir. Um